Hello gang, hello friends, hello gang friends, welcome back. Thank you for joining me today, I hope this video finds you well. Are you well? I hope you're well. If you're new, hello, my name is Jo and I do nail stuff. She does stuff with nail stuff and the stuff she does with nail stuff with nail stuff and stuff the nails. <laughs> the day has come. It's Madame Glam's Black Friday sale, which starts today and it goes on until the 12th. Is it including the 12th? It says 10th to 12th, so I'm guessing yes. So you can get 50% off with the code MISSJOBF, because we're best friends. I think it probably stands for Black Friday, but let's say it stands for best friends. So I'm going to do a set um, to talk about Madame Glam. I don't know. I'm going to do a set using all of their stuff, apart from these tips. These are from McCart, and I'm doing long ones because I'm going to do a snake um, just to represent the fact that Madame Glam is cruelty-free and vegan and all these other good things. It's free of a whole bunch of nasties that can be found in polishes. So snake, why not? So I'm going to start with these two colours, which I showed you on screen a second ago. I can't remember what they're called. Wasn't looking. <laughs> and we're going to do an ombre with them and I'm going to use the Madame Glam ombre brush as well. I am still a bit nasal, still trying to shift the end of this cold and hopefully once it's gone I'll sound less like a man. So I'm going swipey swipe with the ombre brush which blah ombre brush which you can do this on a client without getting it all over their skin. I do have a clip somewhere. I'll see if I can find it and put it in here as well. But you just want to pull at their side walls, sort of pinch them underneath how you would hold their finger anyway, and just don't go a mile to the left and a mile to the right and just keep it. Your brain kind of tells you how far you can go <laughs> as opposed to your feet telling you. But it kind of just it stops you from going crazy wide. Just try it. You'll see. Um, so this is the second coat, just going to blendy blend. And as I take, if I take the brown up and then I want to switch to bringing the cream down, I'll wipe my brush, um, just fold just fold over a lint-free wipe that's got some isopropyl alcohol on it and just pull the brush through. And then I'll start from the cream going downwards. So we will cure this. Oh, and now we're going to use this, keep the change. It's from the... I think it was lost in New York collection. It was a Christmas uh, or a December collection, maybe last year. This collection of magnetic polishes is my favourite collection ever. They're so they're so good with the magnet. Uh, the oh, the colours are so rich, and when you put the magnet on them, they just kind of glow like they're alive. I love them so much. There's um, how many? I think there's eight. Um, I'd recommend. <gasps> Get those with your 50% off during the Black Friday sale because I just, I love them so much. They're amazing. So I'm going to use a magnet to bring out the glowiness, the, bring out the magnetic effect. Oh, look at it. Look at, ah. And this is the, the long fine liner from Madame Glam that I'm using. And then I'm going to add a bit of, um, I think I'm using base coat. I think if this was a person, I'd use a gem gel, but I'm just using base coat and I'm just going to plonk on a rather impressive design of a straight line of crystals. If you've been with me for a while, you know that I just, I suck at crystal placement. I mean, I can put them on, but I'm coming up with patterns and things and I just thought this would suit the straight line down the center. So we've popped some caviar beads either side and now we are going to top and I'll seal in all oh yeah I, I hadn't put enough um base coat down to sink the caviar beads into so they're still kind of loose which I noticed when I was putting them on but I couldn't be bothered to do anything about it so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna seal them in with the top coat again if this was a person I would have made sure that there was enough um base coat or gem gel uh, when I put them on there so we'll seal around all of this and top this and then give it a full cure and there is our first one. Oh, keep the change. That magnetic polish is so gorgeous. I love it so much. So 
that is our first one and the next one is what oh we're just going to do a couple of nails doing just keep the change because it's just it's too beautiful not to not have to not have some that are just it so I'm using this I'm going to try and do a kind of swirl you can bring out the the glowy bits and have the whole nail like that but I quite like the contrast between the glowy bits and the sort of orangey goldy background so I've just pushed the magnet in from one side and then from the other side and then I'll do the same with the second coat you could switch the way that you put the magnets on this one so you get a kind of crisscross s but uh, I wanted to keep it the same. So we'll go in from that side and then in from, oh, look at it. I just love it so much. Have a look at, um, I'll see, uh, I'll put a link to the video where I show all these colors, I think, because they're, they're so freaking good. I, I, I just can't even with how good they are. I think I'm going to have to do maybe a Christmas bauble set using them with little glowy baubles because it's Christmas season now. We're going to start doing Christmas videos after this. So these are the two. Oh, will you just stop it with how beautiful that is? I love it so much. What is that on my finger? Bit of just grime? Eh, just nail stuffs. Nail stuffs. So before we do our snake, I just want to show you again the Madame Glam 2022 Advent Calendar, which I will be opening on camera each day, I think. I'm not sure how I'm going to go about it yet, but this is what it looks like. It is available to purchase now. You can't use discount code on it because it's already discounted based on the price of all the stuff in it. But there's 25 um doors boxes doors um for each day of december and if you get yours as well we can open them together see what goodies we have behind each door so don't forget you can get your hands on that now so the snake i'm going to do a couple of coats of the cream the same cream from the beginning was it cream oh it was something food related i think um i can't remember and then I'm taking, so I've cured that and I'm taking the brown again and I'm going to map out where I want my snake to be and then thicken all of these lines. And with this snake, you can stop at several points along the way if you don't want to go further to each next step. So you can stop once you do this, add some little dots for the eyes um, and you have yourself a flat, plain snake. I hate snakes. I mean, I don't hate them. I've never met one. I have met one, actually. Um, but they just scare the bejesus out of me and they give me the creeps. And I've actually got a snake ring, which I've, I, don't, I should have worn it for this video, Joseph. Um, which a few of you have asked about. It's a really nice ring. But uh, what was I going on about? Jewelry? No. Snakes. Yeah, I don't like them. They scare me. Just the thought of them makes my skin crawl. But on nails and as jewelry... Apparently, I'm fine with that. <laughs> I think they're kind of cool. So we're going to do the little head now, which I'm kind of doing as a soft-edged diamond. And then we will give Mr. Snake a full cure. What shall we call him? Cyril? Cyril Snake? No, I don't like that. Do you remember Cyril Sneer from, what was it called? Raccoons? Was it the Raccoons? I loved that program. Cyril Sneer was weird, though. What was he? What animal was he? Was he an aardvark? No, he was pink. I don't know. Um, let me know in the comments what we should call our snake. So now I'm going to wipe and buff because we're going to take the Madame Glam foil gel. And this this foil, foil gel came in the advent calendar last year. So it's a mini. Um, I'm hoping there's another one in this year's calendar because I really like it. And I don't think they do... A full size of it do they I should really look into that so I'm going to go over the whole snake with the foil gel and the reason I've wiped and buffed is so that when we put our foil down there's no sticky areas anywhere else on the nail that it might pick up so we'll cure that and then take this gold snake print foil and we'll plonk it on 
and then give a good rub a dub dub a press and a rub and I always kind of over rub foils just because I'm still scared of foils <laughs> even though foil gel takes away foil fear of it not being pro properly stuck down or anything I'm still scared every time I peel away whether it's going to be there or not but it always is but so I'm I'm rubbing more than is necessary and then we'll peel away and it turns out I didn't buff well enough um before doing this you can see bits of foil have stuck um on air on the cream areas so I'm just taking I think it's acetone and I'm using my nail because I don't want to go over the bits of foil I do want so I'm just going to wipe those off with a bit of acetone and then so you could also stop at this step if you're happy with the foily snake but now I'm going to put a base coat over it just to protect the foil and what we've done so far and then we're going to take some of this do I I'm curing this coat by the way I'm going to take this um, it's called building gel it's like a solid uh, gel that I guess you could use for build I don't know how well it would be to use for building because it's hard to move around I'm cleaning my hands with some isopropyl alcohol and a lint wipe just because when I when you use your hands to play with this stuff it can make it go a bit um, like grubby looking. Even if your hands aren't dirty, just oils and whatever from your skin kind of make it look a bit grubby. So I'm cleaning my hands first, um, which I suppose isn't a big deal if you're painting over it. But, you know, it, if you're doing this on a person, it would look nice if it didn't turn a horrible, dirty colour after it had been in your hands. And I'm making a little wiggly worm, little snake. And I'm going to place that over where we've got our snake outline. It's fiddly. It's not sticky to touch, but it is a bit sticky. So it is sticking to this fine. Um, but then, And then it's sticking to my fingers even though it's not sticky. It's like it does stick, but it doesn't. <laughs> it does when you stretch it out, but when you have a blob of it, it doesn't. And then I'm just pressing down. As much as I do want it to be really rounded... I don't want it to be really, really tall and look bulbous. So I'm just pushing it a little bit and also doing that so that it covers all the foil area. And I'm taking the Madame Glam silicone tool and I'm just going to push it around and get it where I want it to be. I want to make sure that it's curved. So I'm using <laughs> the end of the brush, the tool, to get a curved shape. And then I'm going to cure each bit as I go just so that I can poke around and fiddle with the bit below it without having to worry about jogging or denting or anything with the bit we've already done so I'll faff around with that for a bit and then cure it and then we'll take some more and we'll go over the rest of the snake see how the, the gel this stuff stays clear this is because I've cleaned my hands because I didn't once before my hands weren't dirty, but they just weren't freshly alcohol wiped and it did make everything, make the clear gel go a bit grimy. So we will do the same. I think I speed up or skip some of this. This one I did too thick, so I kind of stretched it out and pulled some off. And then again, just pressing slightly to cover the foil but not so much that I'm making it really flat. Are snakes flat? No, they're not, Joe. They're rounded. Are there any flat snakes? What are those ones? Is it the cobras that have the really flat head? <laughs> Just pictured it in my mind. Shouldn't have done that. Gross. Actually, I know one of you has, is it one or a few snakes? We talked about it in the comments before. I'd be so scared that in, in, the, in the night although they're probably kept in some kind of tank, in the night they would just kind of strangle you, you know, just wrap themselves around you like um, Carr does to Mowgli in the Jungle Book. Um, right, so we've faffed around with that a bit, and then for his head here, I've rolled out the gel a bit longer than I need it so that I can fold some of it up to make the head shape and then just press out. See, it's a bit too thick, the amount I've put on. 
but you can obviously it's a gel so you can move it about and take bits off and do whatever um, as much as you like before curing because it's it's just going to stay malleable until it's put in the lamp so we'll faff like a fucking champion and then um, we will cure that as well and then again you could stop there and just top the snake if you want or top the whole thing um, maybe stick some eyeballs on or something but I then realized I think I want to go over this with the keep the change polish so the foil gets covered but where I magnetize this polish you can sort of see through it and it gives a glow like you'll see once I've once I've done this it gives a glow but I, I'm not sure whether the glow was there from the polish anyway or whether the foil has just given it an extra glow so maybe I didn't need to do the foil um, you could certainly skip doing the foil step but I am only doing one coat of oh look at this freaking polish I am only doing one coat of it so I think if you did skip the foil step you might want to do two coats um, but it, it does it does give it a bit of a glow under I think I would I didn't plan on going over it so it was just going to be the foil um, so I'm just kind of adding more steps as I go maybe negating the foil step but I think it does add a little summon summon and I'm doing each part of the body and then curing it so that I can mess around with the magnet here and it's not going to affect the bit that we've just done above it. Uh, which is why the snake looks matte now at the bottom because I did do it all in one go, magnetized it and before I put it in the lamp thought no actually it would be better to do each bit separately and get a full glow on each bit and look at his little noggin. Oh my goodness me, it's so glowy, I love it. I think I might put this colour on me next, shall I? I don't know. Um, and then we will give that a full cure and look at our little sissy snake, Cyril snake, Sedg, Sedg, what's the name? Sedg, what's the name that starts Sedg? Cedric, Cedric snake, no. Um, Simon the Snake I, I can't you'll have to name him for me I don't like any of the names that I come up with and then I'm going to take a bit of base coat again um, maybe or did I use gem gel I think I'm using gem gel maybe and then I'm going to add some little eyes in these kind of amber colored crystals that matched the polish and then I thought "Ooh, that looks nice so, oh, I hurt my throat doing that. So I'm adding some at the end because the ring I have um, has crystals on the tail end like that. And then I got carried away and I added some more on the right side of that one and then the left side of that one. Did I just get my lefts and rights right? Yes. And now I'm going to matte top. I want the cream areas matte. And this is where I fucked up. I should have mapped them before. Okay, we've seen it. Shall we? No? Okay. Um, I should have mapped the cream before doing any of the snake stuff. But I, I didn't really know what I wanted it to be. So I'm now using... This is the flat plate br brush. 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 Why can't I say brush? From Madame Glam. And I'm going in between each bit with a matte top coat. And then I'll go shiny over the rest of it and seal the crystals in. I would recommend doing the shiny first. So topping the snake in shiny first. Because it was easier to get in between all the sort of nooks on this when painting the cream. Than it was to go right to the round the sides of each bit of the snake here without touching the cream and making what is now matte shiny. So if you do the shiny first and you do get a bit on the cream area, that's fine because when you matte it, it will go matte and it was easier to top the cream bit than the snake. Oh my word, did any of that make any sense whatsoever? Um, I'm not sure. So we'll finish that off and then I think 
I leave it at that. Oh, did I overkill on the crystals? What do you think? Is the foil just completely gone now? I think it is giving glowy, glowy bits. Is it? Maybe. So that is our snake. I think this is one of the most favourite things I've ever done. Even though snakes give me the heebie-jeebies. Um, I just think it's so cool. Love it. Don't often, not often happy with what I do. Not not happy, just not happy to the point of being like, huh, I'm good. Um, but I, I like that. I think it's really cool. So we'll ogle at that for longer than is necessary. And then Mr. Snake can, oh no, he's going to hiss off, hiss off. How do snakes move? Is there a word for it? Wiggle away? Do they wiggle? What's the snake term for walking? Is it just moving? Now I need to know. Somebody let me know. Lady with the snakes, let me know. <laughs> and now I was going to do... Oh, wait, is it slither? Do they slither? Anyway, um, I, started to do, I started to do this and then thought, oh, that's a mess. So I'll just... Sometimes I'll know that something's not going well, but I'll carry on doing it as a kind of practice and then I'll wipe it off and try and do it properly. But I, once I'd done all these little squares, I thought, I'm not wiping them off and starting again neat, so let's try and neaten up what we've already got. So if I was, um, if I knew I was, if I wasn't planning on wiping this off and then doing it properly, I would have done little horizontal lines going all the way down the centre and then joined them up into little squares and then done this step where I'm just pulling out the sides into a point but I'm kind of starting off with a really crappy shape and trying to rectify it. But I'd got this far and I wasn't going to um, start again. But yeah, I do that sometimes. I sort of think of what I want, do it roughly, and then wipe it off and try and learn from any mistakes I just made. But uh, after putting all these on, it was just, it was too much effort to start again. So I'm going to do the same on this side, just bring those into a point and then try and neaten up the flat bit at the top and bottom of this shape, which is called a, does have a name, the shape. I don't know what it is. And then I will probably cure that. What, oh, am I still faffing? Still faffing, trying to even them out. And the one before the bottom doesn't, isn't as, I haven't got as enough product on it. Like there's a bit of a patch, can you see? But I left it in there because I thought, oh, there must be, there'll be other ones like that. And I'll leave it kind of rough looking. Turns out I think it's the only one. So it does stick out like a sore thumb. And then I flashed that and I'm going to do the same on the left and right, but sort of half of the shape where it cuts off. So we've got the point and then going straight. And then I'll do the same on this side, making sure that that point is in the middle of two shapes. Of two of the center ones. Does that make sense? I think so. Um, just by doing a little line from the center, from the middle of the gap between the center ones and then making a little triangle and then straightening it out towards the end. Oh my goodness, I'm terrible at trying to describe what I'm doing. I'm really sorry. Um, I don't see it ever changing. <laughs> and now we're going to put that kind of looks a bit giraffey doesn't it um we're going to put some of the ch -ch 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 keep the change you filthy animal uh on just a few of these and then magnetize them and get that glow and then on some of them i will magnetize to take the color out you know with magnets you either bring out a new color and a glow or depending on which end of the magnet you use, you kind of take away a lot of the colour. So I'll do some with the glow and then I'll do some taking it away so it's a shade darker than the plain brown on that nail. Uh, trying to do it randomly, um, which I'm not very good at. I don't have a randomly thinking brain. Um, it likes to think in order and symmetry. But, oh, look at that. Sometimes with the magnet, especially on these polishes, this Lost in New York collection, the 
you hold the magnet to it and the glow, the, glow, the glow comes out and you think, oh my goodness, that's amazing. And then you hold it for a second longer and it like super comes out. It's bananas. So you can see there, some of them have got the glow and some of them I've unmagnetized, demagnetized, just taken the color out with the magnet. So it's a bit darker. And then we'll give it a nice thick top coat to even out between all, obviously there's going to be highs and lows with all the um, layers and the gaps between the shapes. And that is that one. I wasn't planning on doing anything too fiddly for the last nail. And it's not that fit. Well, it is a bit fiddly, but it's not overly difficult fiddly. It just takes a bit of time. Uh, but I really love that one. I think that's one of my favourite things as well. Maybe it's just the, the colours. I, oh, it's just so good. And this is the final set. Let me know in the comments what you think. I hope you like it. I love it. I really do. Don't know if I could deal with having a 3D snake on my fingers, but it was super fun to make. Don't forget to use code MissJoBF today to the 12th at madamglam.com for 50%, a whopping 50%. Let me know which one is your favourite. Give this video a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. I appreciate you being here. I'll see you in the next one. Bye, Zabah.